a due anni di distanza dall'uscita di JFK e nel trentesimo anniversario dell'omicidio del Presidente, si ritiene soddisfatto dell'impatto sociopolitico che il film ha avuto? Oh, the film was uh, for me uh, a highlight of my life so far. Uh, it hit an American nerve. It provoked uh, tremendous reactions on both sides, for and against the film. I was accused of everything from lying and defrauding the American public to being a perverter of the children, of the education system, and et cetera. Uh, I feel that the film was good for America because it raised an old question that had been put in the closet. It has provoked enormous amount of counter-reaction. Many books have come out defending the Warren Commission, most recently, this year also, the 30th anniversary. Television, the establishment television shows continue to propound the theory that Oswald did it alone. But I don't honestly believe that the American public has changed its attitude that there was chicanery, an evil deed was done. And I think that the film at least was a voice of dissent and raised, and was a rebellion, and, and raised this question for our school children that something was done that was um, illegal and, uh, and, and bad in our history. And I think that people will still will stay with their subconscious and they know that something rotten happened in America. And as to the future, one only hopes that things will get better. The film provoked the opening of the files, yes, but the files have been opened in a very bizarre fashion, a little bit at a time. And many months have gone by and nothing really has happened. I don't believe that there's anything really in the files that will point to the villains here because these things are done in a clandestine fashion. But I do think that the film supports the concept of an open democracy, that we have as a people the right to our secrets, the right to our own history, which they did recently in the Soviet Union and which they've done in East Germany and in Eastern Europe. But in America, we still continue to labor under the, the, the curse of national security state that the American people are not allowed to know their own history, whether it's just John Kennedy or J. Edgar Hoover. The Freedom of Information Act is a very duplicitous law because it says we have the right to freedom of information, but whenever we actually can get a hold of any of these files, they come to us with three quarters of them crossed out. Anything that's in, in any way sensitive has been crossed out. So we really don't have any information at the end of the day here. We are suffering as a people from amnesia. We don't know our own American history. In JFK, spezzoni di documentari storici sono stati mischiati a materiale di finzione girato nello stile dell'epoca, una scelta che alcuni hanno giudicato addirittura immorale. Come risponde a questa accusa? Well, I think that's, you know, that's just one of many accusations. I, 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 I defended it at the time uh, as the right of a filmmaker in making a movie. Once you enter into the realm of a movie and you use an actor, Kevin Costner, to portray a real person, you are in the realm of, of uh, dramatic license to begin with. The moment you put a, a shirt, a, a hair, a costume, you put dialogue in somebody's mouth, uh, you, you design a, a, a location, you are in the realm of dramatic license. Uh, i used all the weapons that were available to me as a filmmaker to maximize the impact of my story, to get the attention of the public. I'm dealing with a very arcane and cerebral issue. I have thousands of pages of Warren Commission report, very dry material, cross-examination, witnesses, boring stuff. I'm making a, a movie that's already three hours and eight minutes long, which is difficult for people to sit through, mostly about dialogue. And I'm saying to myself, how do I make it interesting so people will not sit through a documentary? So uh, I was faced with the decision as a filmmaker to be dramatic. And I used dramatic license. But I did, did so, and I defend myself, for using dramatic license in the spirit of the truth. You can't be literal because in, in, tr in, the, in true life, when you have five characters that, that, uh, uh, that are similar, but they each give us a different piece of information. In a movie, one tends to take the five characters and make them into one character because you have the considerations of time. And uh, people don't remember five faces, they remember one face. So movies force us into this dramatic license. Come regista, sente la responsabilità di mantenersi fedele al fatto storico? 
I believe I answered this. Uh, I'm sorry. I believe I answered the question in my last answer. But to repeat, I think that the filmmaker has a responsibility to, first of all, to his conscience. It's between him and his conscience. Otherwise, we're into an area of censorship. A filmmaker should be responsible in the sense of doing his homework. He should read history. He should listen to all the different arguments, pro and con. And then he's in the realm of making up his own mind. And he, he chooses to interpret history the way he chooses to do it. And uh, you can't have newspapers like the New York Times wagging their fingers at the filmmaker and saying, you have misinterpreted the Kennedy murder because we, the establishment, feel that he was killed by uh, Lee Harvey Oswald as a lone nut. And you have not agreed with that. You know, then you're in an area where we're not long. No, we're, we're into censorship, and it's it's not just a cultural censorship. It's truly political censorship. Because if Kennedy was killed by a, uh, by a conspiracy, which is what I believe, it casts doubt on the legitimacy of the American government, which I also believe, and which many people believe. And you in Italy know quite a little bit about governments because you don't take them that seriously. And maybe it would be healthier for the American people not to take their government so goddamn seriously. JFK ha una struttura estremamente complessa. Ci vuole parlare della struttura narrativa dei suoi film? Of JFK? Sì, e di altri che ritiene importanti. Well, each film, each film demands a different uh, style, a, a philosophical approach. Uh, with JFK, I think we were trying to... Well, we, we never had the truth. There were large gaps in the story. It's like the Watergate tapes. We, 17 and a half minutes are missing. Well, in the JFK murder, 70 or 80 percent of the story is missing. And, and you hear different sides. There's a witness here, a witness, and they're contradictory. So what we tried to do stylistically is show the fragmentation of reality. Uh, we used an MTV style to indicate different points of view, to raise the question, really, of who Who owns reality? Is it the news media? With their pers the, you see a lot of television in the movie, and the television says this is the truth, and it's not the truth. And then behind that, you see another story. You see, I think, the uh, Dealing Plaza murder in Dealing Plaza. You see it several times in the movie, each time from a different vantage point. Uh, I admire Costa Gavras for that usage of, of, of perception in, in the movie Z and in his other movies, and I wanted to suggest that the events at Dealey Plaza can be reconstructed several different ways. Può descrivere la struttura narrativa di altri suoi film? About what? Quelli che considera più significativi, più well, importanti. Each, each film is so different. Uh, I suppose that Platoon and Born on the Fourth of July and uh, my new film about Vietnam, Heaven and Earth, to some degree would be classical narratives. They, 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 they take place in a, with a classical beginning, middle, and end and, and, and unfold that way. Certainly, The Doors is, is structured as, a, as an MTV type of movie where each song creates a mood and the, movie, the story moves forward through these moods of this, each created by each song, which actually are done in a chronological order to suggest that Jim Morrison's music uh, reflected his life, his poetry. Anche Talk Radio è un film molto interessante. Talk Radio was a uh, bizarre experiment done in 27 days, actually, uh, 26 days, where uh, we tried to take a play. We took a play by Eric Bogosian. We added a book by Al about Alan Berg, the talk show host, and then threw in our, uh, some flashbacks uh, with his wife in the middle of it. It was a very sketchy structure. Uh, I'm not sure it was entirely my, my most successful movie, but it was an interesting experiment. Uh, the movie we just finished, also called Natural Born Killers, is like The Doors, extremely experimental. We try, uh, we, we're in and out of time, back and forth, sideways. Uh, the spinal structure is, is very bizarre in the movie, and uh, we try new things. So each film, as I said, is, is a bit of a step in a new direction. Il ritratto dell'America che emerge dai suoi film è quello di un paese problematico, popolato di personaggi sinistri. È un ritratto fedele? I don't agree with that assessment at all, to be honest. Uh, I think the, uh, my view of America is one of hope. And uh, I love this country. It's the one that I grew up in. Uh, I served this country. I believe in it. 
I think that our leadership has been suspect. I, I have very strong doubts, grave doubts about our government, about their policies over the years. But I believe in the American way, a system of, of states' rights and of freedom, as much as you know, relative, relative freedom, and of the concept of the Constitution. Uh, America was a great social experiment to combine immigrants into uh, a, a, a rainbow uh, uh, of second lives, a new beginnings, that we would come to this country and we would have freedom to express ourselves in new ways. And I still see a lot of that in this country, uh, and I believe in it. I see a lot of anger and a lot of jadedness and a lot of cynicism, but I see that also uh, everywhere in the world. I see it in Europe I extensively. I don't believe the European system would work for America. I, I'm against socialism in all its European manifestations, and I have an abhorrence of it. I think that it's contrary to the American system. But uh, I truly believe in my heroes. I think that people like Ron Kovic and Laylee Hayslip in the new movie, the Heaven and Earth movie, are the best of what is America, the immigrant strain, people that come here who may start life on one level and through the American system, in a, in the way of life, they change. They become other people, and, they, and their consciousness develops in, in ways that they were maybe not expecting. And they're heroes to me, because they grew as people. Uh, I think there's much good in America, and I think that it's easy to take cheap shots and, and say uh, all of the usual things about crime and this and that. These are problems, uh, and sometimes they're exacerbated by government and by the media in America. Come lavora con gli attori? Uh, I work hard with the, with the actors. We work on rehearsal. We try to make it realistic for ourselves by entering into the world in which we're, we're writing about. So uh, I think a certain degree of commitment is required. And uh, sometimes I take the actor and put him in the jungle and make him become a soldier. I took the actresses in Heaven and Earth and I met, put them in Vietnam, actually, with, uh, on an agricultural farm so that they would really work with their hands and with their feet in the mud. Because you can't fake being a farmer. You can't fake being a soldier. I, uh, so, you know, you have to make that collision between the, the actor and what he is and what the real character is. And you look for, in the actor, the qualities that are similar to the role he's playing with Tom Cruise, I, I felt that there was a dark side. Everyone's saying that Tom is so clean cut. He's not, I mean, there's another side to Tom. So you look for that. Michael Douglas, I said, I'm sure this boy uh, is got a, a bit of his father in him. His father had always played uh, heels and uh, bad guys. So it was, I, I think I saw that in Michael and brought that out. Uh, Eric is, is that character. Uh, right, and wrote about it, so that was not such a difficult ch choice. And Val Kilmer had a lot of Jim Morrison in him, a lot of mysterious areas, uh, un unreachable aloofness, uh, which I sensed. I was particularly happy with uh, my new film, Heaven and Earth, with uh, this young girl we found in uh, California. She was a college student at uh, studying pre-medicine. And she's a 21-year-old Vietnamese girl called Hip Thi Le, and she's uh, uh, a boat person. She came over from Vietnam when she was eight years old on a boat, escaped. And uh, she had never acted before. I never put her into acting school. And she, uh, she's, uh, she's just marvelous in the movie. She carries the whole movie on her tiny shoulders, actually. Uh, so this is a, you'll see the movie. I hope you will share this opinion. But it was quite an experience, and uh, she, she was a natural. Some people, are, you know, the actors do a lot of their own work, too. They, they have this natural charisma that comes from them. And uh, sometimes you just let them go, let them sail. But the important thing is also, when they're off base, is to be caring and critical at the same time, is that you can help them get back on base. But you must sometimes tell them the truth. You can't lie. I think sometimes directors lie too much. I think sometimes you must be honest and confront and confront them with with with, with 
something you don't like. Lei ha la fama di essere un regista particolarmente severo con gli attori, è vero? It's part of the director's job is to uh, push the actor. Uh, let's be honest, most actors that I've worked with, I would say I've been successful 80% of the time. I've failed 20% of the time. You don't see my failures as much as I do because they end up on the cutting room floor, many of them. But uh, uh, I found that many actors at the end of the day are lazy, that they don't want to prepare as, as thoroughly as they should for the role. They think that they can show up and they can do it. My rehearsals are tough, not necessarily because I'm looking to perfect the performance in the rehearsal, but I want to ask the questions and I want to run through the alternative ways of behavior in the rehearsal. So we have rehearsals that are extensive uh, and we try things. Uh, they, they, I'm not interested in getting the answers necessarily but starting the process of asking the questions. So sometimes, uh, you know, when I have, when I want to make a, so a film about soldiers, I want my actors to be soldiers. I want them to smell like them, to act like them, to be tired and dirty. And you can't do that by putting makeup on on the same day and just coming out. You can't. So we, 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 we took them out into the jungle and made them live there for two weeks and sleep there. It was important. It was very, and they were good for it. They were mean. They were angry. They hated me. But that's good. Uh, same thing with the actresses in Heaven and Earth. Uh, you know, it's nice to say you're going to play a Vietnamese peasant, but unless you go out there and you work, and put your feet in the water and pick rice and harvest rice and carry water buckets and build up your muscles uh, and, and act and walk like a peasant, you're not going to be a peasant on the day. So uh, I had some resistance there sometimes. And, you know, you, You, you have to be a bit of a drill sergeant. You say, look, you know, go out there and you're going to be a farmer. Otherwise, don't be in the movie. You know, don't show up. I don't want to work with somebody who is, you know, thinks this is some kind of glamour job. You know, on uh, Natural Born Killers, uh, I wanted an actress, my actress, to be tough, physically tough. So I, I had her, poor Juliette Lewis, was working out with weights. She's a small girl. She was working out with weights. I had her with a trainer. I had a boxing coach because she didn't know anything about street fighting. And I wanted her to learn how to box so she could have, you know, she could look like she knew what she was doing. And she gave me a lot of shit at some time, you know, like, I can do it, I can do it. And I said, Juliet, forget it. You're either going to show up and, and rehearse for the next month or forget it. And she showed up. And she, you know, sometimes you have to drag her out of bed. But uh, she's good. And she's better in this picture than I've ever seen her because she's got some, uh, she's got some muscle on her. She's not just, you know, this kind of like, whiny wimp that she's played but uh, she's a wonderful actress but now she's got a little muscle power so i think that really was worth it i hated i hated being a i hate being a teacher and a drill sergeant and all that i hate that stuff i really want to just i mean i my dream is people like gary oldman they just show up they're prepared you know by the time gary walked into my office on uh, jfk the man had an american accent and uh, lee harvey oswald he had studied the films of oswald back and forth and he knew the accent to the T. I guess you call that the British the British school of acting which I, I didn't have to suggest it. He came defending himself. He was prepared. And it was a delight to have that kind of an actor. That's not often the case. <laughs> you don't get Laurence Olivier. Uh, sometimes that's not so good either because it can go over the top the other way. But you know sometimes you just got to be you got to be this asshole with a whip and, 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 and a gun and you know yeah, come on and I hate that but uh, it's part of the uh, part of the downside of the job Lei ha iniziato la sua carriera come sceneggiatore come descriverebbe il processo di trasformazione di una sceneggiatura in un film In my head there I come uh, well usually I'm involved deeply with the script either as the writer or the co-writer so I've I've absorbed the uh, the movie in many ways in my head before I start. And that is the key to uh, my involvement in the movie is basically I'm a writer. Uh, I come to the set with my, a shot list in my mind. I've broken down my script. I have an idea exactly of how I'd want to cover the scene. And I've spent hours of talking with my di director of photography. We've collaborated. We've talked about the mood, the color, the feel. Often he comes up with very good ideas that I use. 
Uh, I come on this uh, sometimes uh, if it's a very difficult sequence. For, I might try a storyboard, but I have not really used them that well. Because when I get to this to the uh, floor, to the set, uh, reality intrudes on uh, uh, so much of what you've sketched. So I have not found this storyboard as valuable as uh, as, I, as I thought I would. Quando ha iniziato a scrivere per il cinema, si è ispirato a qualche modello particolare? Screenwriter? Sì. In my life? Sì, agli inizi. When I started as a, I started at film school at NYU Film School, I was making short films, but I always watched the old movies with the eye towards the script and I noticed all the films in the 30s, the 40s, the good films, they were, they were well written. Uh, you could tell that right away. I read a lot of the old scripts and I always admired the screenwriters and feel that they've always been shortchanged in this business. Uh, I wrote several scripts. I wrote actually 11 or 12 scripts before I, I, I sold one. Uh, Robert Bolt, the English screenwriter, was very helpful to me. Uh, he uh, uh, helped me, he taught me things and he got me an agent with an Italian company. Franco Cristaldi owned it, uh, actually it was called uh, the cover-up was a script I wrote, and Robert was a partner with Fernando Guia. And uh, Robert uh, uh, got me an agent. They didn't make the movie, but it was very helpful in my life. And uh, I continued to write. I wrote, uh, I always thought that, uh, and I still think that if you have a good script, uh, for the most part, it will turn out to be a good movie. Uh, but with a bad script, even with a great director, I don't think you're going to be able to get it turn it into something special. So I really believe in, in working the script to, to the point at which you feel comfortable and ready to go. Il montaggio ha un ruolo primario nei suoi film e lei ha lavorato con montatori del calibro di David Brenner, Joe Hasting e Pietro Scalia, che per JFK si è giudicato l'Oscar. Qual è il suo rapporto con questi collaboratori? I think my editors are as important as, as uh, my, my co-writers because I think that editing has a lot to do with writing and that a good editor brings uh, a new eye uh, and also a feel for the music, a feel for the sound. Uh, an editor can do a lot for you. Uh, I'm very involved with editing, always have been. I used to edit my own movies in film school and I like to uh, stay close to the editing. But I have, as the years have gone on, I've gotten more and more faith in my, in my editors. I've always used young editors, people that are apprentices or assistants, and they've grown with me through the years, which is nice. Uh, for example, uh, Pietro and Joe were assistant editors originally, and David was the assistant editor to my editor on Platoon. Uh, so each, I've, I've been able to use, uh, to, to uh, work from within, to work with the new editors. Un rapporto molto stretto, immagino. Very closely, absolutely. My editor, uh, Probably, my editors were exhausted after JFK. They were dead. Uh, they, we completed the movie in four months after we shot it. Four months. And you know how difficult that, that movie was. And I, they were so exhausted, I think, that uh, they were ready for a nervous breakdown. But uh, they did a great job. Also, Hank Corwin did a great job. He was the third editor on JFK. I, I would like to mention him. Hank Corwin, who is now cutting Natural Born Killers for me. Come protagonista di Heaven and Earth, il film che conclude la sua trilogia sul Vietnam, ha scelto una donna. Come mai? Well, I think it's fascinating to, to go across uh, to the other side, to see the uh, victims of the war, to see what their point of view was. So I've done two movies about Americans, and I thought it would be good to do a movie about a Vietnamese. And I read this book by Lady Hayslip, which was two books, actually, which were really beautiful. Moved me, moved my heart. And it just was nice that she was a woman because it gives me, put it this way, a new point of view to my films. It's my yin and yang. I'm very, uh, and she was working with me side by side all the way through, as was, uh, it was really my film with three women because uh, there was Lei Li and there was Joan Chen, the mother, and there was this little girl called, you know, the new girl in the movie, Hip Ti Lei. So with, between the three women, I had my, an earful but they were very helpful and they showed me and they guided me a lot through their problems. Lei stesso ha definito Heaven and Earth la mia Giovanna d'Arco. Si riferiva alla particolare spiritualità del film? 
Well, I think that the Lady Hayslip story is spiritual. Fundamentally, she goes through so much suffering and so many changes that at the end of the day, what she learns from the, through, the, through these two books, these two memoirs, is the power of the Spirit. And she, I think the reason she does well in her life is that she discovers the Spirit in herself. She never really loses it because her father and mother, especially her father, taught her that when she was young. But she evokes the Buddhist spirit of uh, detachment from your suffering and conquering through, uh, conquering the, uh, the illusions of life. And uh, she's, I think that's what gives it this movie and this book its, its ultimate power. Pensa che i sentimenti degli americani riguardo al Vietnam siano cambiati dal 1986, l'anno di uscita di Platoon? I think Platoon was part of the reassessment of Vietnam that went on. It took so many years for us to uh, come to terms with it, at least looking at it again. And I think that um, Born on the Fourth of July for me was important because it was about what it was like to come home to a country that was divided. And I think that Heaven and Earth would be, hopefully, would be the beginning of America starting to look at Vietnam as a country rather than as an enemy. It's amazing to me that we, America, rebuilt Germany after World War II, after one year, when we've taken 20 years with Vietnam. We don't even recognize Vietnam. Uh, even today, as we speak, when the Arabs and the Jews have finally made a peace settlement, on the very day that this happened, President Clinton renewed the sanctions against Vietnam because we're hostage in this country to hate. We're hostage to hate. Uh, I hope the movie Heaven and Earth does some good you know, to break down the barriers and make people remember that there's always two sides to suffering. That uh, the suffering was not just American suffering. The Vietnamese suffered much more than we did. Xtlan è il nome della sua casa di produzione. Con quali criteri sceglie fin da produrre? Oh, we don't do that much. We, we like to uh, work with quality uh, uh, projects. We, we like to work with ideas that are engaging, that are of interest to people. We like to work from our feelings, you know. Uh, it's difficult to produce movies because so few of them get done correctly. It's nice to have a joy luck club which is done very well for very little money. Um, but there's no real criteria. If the, I think if they're young directors, uh, people with ideas, new people. Uh, but on the other hand, if something commercial and interesting comes in, uh, even with a big star, I think we'd be very interested. So it's not like we have a, a, set, a strong set of guidelines. I just don't want to do things that I've seen before. I guess that's what I'd say to you. If something's sort of a little bit been done and done and done it just what, what's the purpose of our doing it I don't know I think maybe excellent is for new things Wild Palms il programma che ha diretto per la televisione non ha entusiasmato i critici perché secondo lei I think Wild Palms actually had some very interesting uh, very positive reviews a lot of people thought it was very fresh television the thing with Wild Palms is that it was pretty avant-garde and we were trying to do sci science fiction things, and, uh, mind th things of the mind that were new for television. But uh, a lot of what that series said about the future, I think, is prophetic. I think it will happen. Uh, we did actually, the, the show did quite well in the 18-year-old to 49-year-old category. The advertising was very good. We stayed, and we, were, we did very well in the cities, but I don't think it was a type of series that would be understood by older people or people outside the cities necessarily. Natural Born Killers, il film a cui sta lavorando adesso, è tratto da un soggetto di Quentin Tarantino, regista e sceneggiatore estremamente violento. È stato difficile passare dalla spiritualità di Heaven and Earth alla violenza di questa sua ultima produzione? No, it was a very refreshing change. Uh, I, uh, after uh, having, uh, I've always done different kinds of movies, as you know, The Doors is different from Born on the Fourth of July. They were done right back to back. Um, I don't want to repeat myself. I, I found that uh, the Tarantino script was rewritten by me and uh, two other writers uh, extensively. 
So the original script that's there, which is very violent, is still violent, but it's violent in a different way, I think. I think uh, we, we tried to make it more of a satire. Uh, we, we're a little more detached from the violence, and I think we're looking at it and making commentary about it. I think the model for our film, uh, Natural Born Killers, would probably be uh, Mr. Kubrick's uh, Clockwork Orange would be the, uh, the appropriate model, and a little bit of The Wild Bunch, too, uh, by Peck and Paul. But it's quite a different movie. Uh, and uh, I don't want to talk too much about it. It's coming out next summer in America. È affascinato dalla violenza? I think violence is the way of life in this country, and I think you have to accept it. There's violence in all forms of life. It's not just about street crime. It's about, you know, environmental violence, nuclear violence, uh, corporate violence. The violence is an American way. And I think that the movie makes commentaries about that and how violence is sexy in a way, and that way it's sort of looked at as sexy by, uh, by our media. Protagonista di Natural Born Killers è la stampa scandalistica. Può essere considerato un film parabola sulla moralità dei media? Oh, the, the media is, is perceived in this as a demon. Uh, but so is... Uh, the, uh, so are other people. It's not just about the media. Uh, I think there's the concept of uh, justice is, 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 is interesting in the movie. Uh, I don't want to tell you too much about it, but there's a uh, perversion is, 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 is rampant. In some ways, the killers, the serial killers, become the heroes of the movie, or the anti-heroes. <laughs> Tra poco.